I started writing poetry and stuff when I was eight years old, I guess. Um, I didn't start singing until I was about 13, but everybody in the community here had a guitar in their house, and it was kind of a thing all us girls did was collect songs and sing them and learn them. And I entered a couple of the local contests that would come through here. Uh, it didn't occur to me as a career uh, until I was actually away in university and, you know, playing part-time around folk clubs and that sort of thing. I just kept singing and it just kind of evolved itself. I don't think I ever sat down and went, oh yes, I want to be a singing star. It was, I was going to be a teacher and I was going to rodeo in the summertime. That was the initial plan. <laughs> I was going to be a rodeo star. <laughs> I was in the States doing the Master of Fine Arts and I graduated at Columbia and then I came back up to Canada and I let a few people know what I'd done and showed the work before I knew it. Curators were knocking on my door, the phone started ringing, mm -hmm. it's never stopped. <laughs> it just sort of, but yeah, it just grew and in the end it's the work that speaks for itself. But people don't realize that the whole creative process is a, is a dance, it's a ritual, it's a ceremony. And so the artist puts himself at great lengths of, of energy and uses knowledge beyond the profane to create and do things like that. So your body can do many phenomenal things under certain conditions. And that's when art is created under those kind of magical conditions. What I love about the desert is just the heat, the colors, the cactuses, the sounds, and the peacefulness it has. Mostly I come here to pray, and then I go back home and paint up a whirlwind, <laughs> inspired by the prayers, and by the people in the desert, and just the sacredness of the land. It's very important to me. It balances me. Like I have both the desert and the water spirit in me. I love the ocean at the same time I love the desert. There's a certain sacredness that's in the desert. The first real body of work of hers that I saw was more figurative. And um, what I saw in that work was a real strength of color and uh, powerful imagery. It uh, didn't have the spiritualism that um, it shows in her work now, but it had an underlying factor that was really a mag magnetic draw. When we had our first exhibit in 1989, it was extremely well received and, and the show virtually sold out with an awful lot of carryover. Uh, the show that followed a year later was quite different. It was more spiritual. It was more abstract. It was quite totally different, actually. But the response was still there. The response actually increased as she continued to show her work. She has one of the biggest followings I've ever seen. Well, artists are like wounded healers, and they heal themselves by creating. So. The actual process of art making is a regeneration process and that may be in many different forms. An artist isn't just paint, they do other things too. They may dance, they may sing, they may eat a lot, they may like to watch TV, they may pray. And so these ways that man finds to regenerate and make himself feel good are important because it feeds the spiritual self and it's when man stops doing those things that then things such as depression and, and wounds come in. That's when you start talking about culture too then, because then that's when man looks to his culture, because a culture holds the secrets to regeneration, healing, to happiness. That's why culture is a very important thing. And of course, art is very much an expression of culture, art of all forms. What makes Jane's work so unique among the other Native American artists is um, 
in one respect, you're not seeing the tried and true formulas. And with Jane, she brings her own personal life experiences or her own personal vision rather than constantly depicting um, one or two legends over and over again. She may mix some of that in, but it's her own personal vision and her own statement that comes out. We have actually had a lot of success with her work in the marketplace and that's I think primarily because not only is it uh, lively in color and expression but also it has a message and right now people are really looking for um, their art to have something more to it than just decoration. It's very nice to see you all for this uh, very, very special exhibition opening. This is the event of our year here at the gallery. And um, we're very honored to be able to present the work of Jane Ash Patra. It was really very exciting for me to be able to have this traveling solo show go across Canada. And so I took it upon myself to make it my whole life for the last three years and to make sure that when I did it, it would be what I really wanted to express. So the preparation and the uh, work involved and then the whole thing of having it put into the gallery in the opening was very important. The first one was symbolic to show Western culture, European culture, and Native culture, what Native people had prior to coming of Columbus or prior to being, as you would call the European term, discovered. And I was saying that Native people had already consecrated the land. They had already claimed it and made it theirs, and they were a part of it, and they lived with nature. And what they already had instilled was a strong civilization strong moral values, a very, very strong religious base. So these spiritual ways of rejoicing were already there. And then the Europeans came over and shared theirs with our, shared their ways, which was Christianity. So then that brings you into the next panel and talks about the whole coming of the Bible and the teachings with it and Jesus Christ. And so in that second panel where I put up the crucifixes and then I, underneath I put the name of warriors that died since the European coming over to North America. So in a disparate connection I was giving them the highest honors by giving them a Christian burial or a Christian acknowledgement. So then we have the third panel, which is alcohol, and that came after Columbus too, right? Because the uh, Native people didn't know what alcohol was. A lot of Native people, because of their loss of culture and because of assimilation and because of the government's ruling that they can't own a drum or they can't sweat or they can't hold a pop badge, they lost their spirituality temporarily. So they went to the bottle because that's what a lot of times people do. So in the middle I placed the pictures of the people, native people who've been victims to alcoholism and I placed them inside pear flesh bags which were noted to be the sacred bags that we would carry our sacred objects in and I was saying to native people that although you drink, I don't persecute you because you drink because I can see why, but I'll put you in the pear flesh bags and heal you. The fourth panel, that's the last one. That's one more that deals with transformation. And that's when you follow a road, the sacred road, and you yourself become a transformer. In other words, a person who has the ability to be a healer and to be a philosopher, a sage, a poet, an artist. But in order to reach that stage involves being able to operate at a higher state of consciousness. And so it shows the beginning of the shamanic journey.
Well, I invited Laura down because she expressed an interest in experiencing a sweat, experiencing the ways of the people down here. I became involved with the Mother Earth Society and they're doing sweats and um, I hadn't got quite that far until this opportunity presented itself here with Jane. So this is going to be something new and different for me. I'm not sure what I think about going to a sweat in the desert where it's already <laughs> pretty warm, but uh, it's kind of interesting the way the spirituality in the native culture has, has enhanced my music and now it's become the other way around where the music is helping me develop spiritually. It's just great the way the whole thing has gone hand in hand and the experiences have been presented to me. I guess my first real song I wrote when I was about 13 or 14 and it was about the Chinook wind coming here and taking all the snow away and how it was such a healing thing when your heart broke at 13 years old and some guy had turned you down and but the Chinook wind came and made you feel so much better. That's what that was about. <laughs> it's still around someplace. <laughs> I think the first song I recorded was Empty Streets or, or The Sun Always Shines in the Home Place. I think we did them all together in the same session and um, that was submitted eventually to Royalty Records. I remember dropping it off at the local, local uh, radio station in Edson. I dropped off a copy to them of the brand new single and uh, I was kind of on my way back to Edmonton and, and they, they put it on the air as I was driving somewhere between Edson and Evansburg and I, I nearly drove in the ditch. <laughs> it was pretty neat. A few years ago, I made a decision to um, make a change from the, the bar circuit and clubs into trying to get into more of the concert vein. And um, I sort of felt that there was something else my music could be used for than selling alcohol and making people drunk. It's wonderful the way when I decided to make the change, the opportunities seemed to fall into place for that kind of creative difference. At the same time, I went through some personal changes and became involved with the Mother Earth Healing Society and uh, working with kids at the Ben Caffrope School. And the whole thing kind of reflected itself in the writing. The school is such a great school. Um, they, they offer so many things to the kids so that they can find something that they want to do and want to, to be involved in enough to kind of rise above some of the situations that a lot of them have grown up in. You can write songs about love stories, about all kinds of things. Uh, so who's, any, anybody got an idea for a hook for a song, hook line or a, a theme for a song? Any kind of songs, yeah. The streets. The streets? Oh, yeah. native. Something native? Ghost dancing. Okay. The, all that I know about this idea is that it's uh, a very secret dance. Is that correct? Uh -huh. Well, that's a great idea. That's a really good hook, actually. So we'll put that it's together. It's really hard to open people's eyes at that age to the fact that there is another uh, way to live. Um, you know, they're, they're so tied up with their friends and what their friends are into. Uh, and, you know, music helps and, and we've had a, a, a really good run with that, the songwriting yeah, like courses it, that we've be done. And it gives the kids a chance to express okay. um, what they feel, you know, about being Native. And so what the neat is thing is that what's starting to come out is that they, um, they really relate to fly. the the fact that they are native and that there's okay. there's help that they can get that from being fly. that. I don't want to say goodbye. I don't want to go and say goodbye. Let's start with that, okay? Sometimes uh, the words will give you the ideas uh, the other way around, actually. The Yeah, you get a tune in your head from the words, and at least that's what happens for me, so I'll give that a try. Just 
too bright yeah. at this time of the day. Just, yeah, a little <laughs> uh, snazzy. <laughs> so this tune um, was uh, written by the kids at school, and, and they tell me that uh, like they want to do a thing on dances. One of the kids said, well, how about the ghost dance, which is like a, a secret, uh, sacred sort of a dance, I guess. All I've got is like a chorus part. And then we'll need to uh, need some uh, like all we get so far is like. the chorus mm -hmm. and, and great. yeah the, uh, it's a really good idea the verses would be uh, sort of along the lines of a we can embellish on that line that you did uh, -da -da -da. I could play yeah. a good thing with the bloody -da -da. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In a white culture, it seems like we have uh, our our lives, and then we've got our music as kind of sometimes part of it. But it's it's that art form, and then the art is that over, over there. It isn't like incorporated in the the daily culture, in the daily life, as much as in the native culture. And uh, this is what I try and tell the kids in school. We have, as natives, have a lot to offer as the artists of the white society. When I'm working with the kids, I try and tell them that uh, they have something to offer that way. And that was how I got into, the, you know, the white, or felt accepted by the, by the white society, and by the school that I went to was, was through the music that I could offer. And, and that they probably have something very special to offer that way as well. Quite frankly, I was afraid I might pass out or be ill because I'm not real good in in uh, steam rooms. So the idea of a sweat was kind of scary from the physical point, but it was kind of the next logical step in the spiritual search that I started on a few years ago. She was really courageous. We were really proud of her to be able to take that big giant leap. A lot of Native people are too scared to go back to their traditional ways because they don't understand, so they fear it. But these are the ways that will heal our nation. The discipline of it was a very learning experience for me. The, the use of uh, kind of meditative uh, means, if you like, to, to deal with a physical situation is something I learned. Um, and it was very much like what I'd experienced in the Mother Earth talking circle as far as healing and um, the spiritual end of it goes.
But what she paid was high Louise from Louisiana She really loved that man He paid you Hi, Mama. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Fine. <sighs> Could you made it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All um, experiences do show up in in your, a person's art eventually, and uh, I'm sure that there will be a song or two come out of the experience in the Valley of the Sun. I mean, it's such a beautiful place and a beautiful name. It's really nice to have um, met some of the people down there and. Uh, uh, made some connections. I, I feel uh, more more like a real Indian after being down there. I guess it, it certainly did that for me. Being, being accepted by those people in a totally different part of the world uh, makes you realize that um, as a native person you have family everywhere. It's such a, a beautiful area. But you know it's funny because you get down there thinking that uh, it's so great, and, but, and you come back here, and uh, really, I have to, th to thank the Great Spirit for, for where I live and where I've been brought up at. Artists are like creators, and what does a creator do? When he hears a good song, he visualizes a beautiful thought, and when he looks at a beautiful painting, he hears music. And we all have this ability in us to not only be recipients of the art, but also to give the art. So we are all artists. And each and every individual has this ability. And they find their own way to express it that's unique to them and that makes them feel good and therefore regenerates their spirit and their sharing themselves with all of us.